Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So I hope you're ready for some action today because we're gonna be checking out this little guy. It's the DJI Action 2. And if you're looking at this thing and are like, where's the rest of it? Well, I have an actual answer for you. Boom! It's got this little front screen attachment that's actually gonna boost the battery life of the camera and also give you an added point of monitoring and control. It also has this whole other suite of accessories that use the same magnet system, which is really neat. So yes, this is a very modular camera system. Like, the camera itself is pretty capable, but you really get the most out of the system when you bust out all these little accessories and add-ons. So let's quickly start talking about this camera, or I'm just gonna play with these little magnets all day. All right, so here's how this is gonna go down. I'm gonna go through everything that comes in our DJI Action 2 kit, the camera module, the front screen module, and then also a couple of these accessories I have here with me right now. And then also a few accessories I don't have with me because they're out on rentals currently. And after that, we're gonna check out some test footage I was able to get with the Action 2 to see what this thing can do video-wise. All right, so let's get into it. Starting with the camera module, here you can tell that it's a very minimal design, sleek, but minimal. The only features on here besides the lens and screen are this button on top, a small microphone on the side, an LED indicator light, a small loop for a wrist strap sort of thing, and the hardware for the magnetic connection system it's got going on here. Two slots for those securing hooks and this nice strong magnet with eight contact points and we'll touch on those in just a sec. The lens is a DJI designed f2.8 lens that's advertised as a 155 degree field of view lens, which if I did this calculation correctly is about a five millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera. So that's extremely wide, whatever it is. And the lens itself sits in this slightly raised part of the housing behind a sheet of Gorilla Glass. The back screen is also a Gorilla Glass protected LED touchscreen that goes right up to the edge of the body, and the edge of the picture in the screen is only a little bit further in than that. Okay, moving on to the front screen unit. It's almost identical in size to the camera unit, but it is a little bit wider or deeper, depending on whatever you consider that dimension right there. But otherwise, same size. It's got an identical touchscreen LCD as the camera unit, but it faces the other way once they're both connected. And when they are connected, it actually won't allow you to use two screens at the same time. When you operate one, it automatically locks the other. And clearly you can see that this is the hardware that corresponds to the magnet system on the camera unit. The two flat locking hooks on each side fit into those slots at the bottom of the camera module, and those eight pins in the center line up with those flat contact points on the camera, and unable to be seen is a fairly strong polarized magnet that only allows these accessories to be connected in one direction. You'll notice those hooks have small little finger grips here, and that's just so you pinch them both down, pull it off, and the camera is released. Once you do this, you'll notice that the front screen unit flashes this little screen that just says it's been disconnected, and it knows this from this little black pin up here. As for the rest of the front screen, it's got a rear-facing LED indicator. You get three more microphones on every remaining side, so paired up with a camera, that's four internal mics facing four directions. It's got a little speaker here, and under that is the same multi-use button that's on top, giving you top and side access to that button. It also has these locking slots for connecting that magnet system, and we'll see why in a second. And these last two things are about the relationship of this camera module and the front screen module. Yes, we're gonna talk about relationships. It's gonna get deep. So this front screen unit is what stores the physical media in this micro SD slot right here. But the camera is capable of independently recording without this using its 32 gigs of internal memory. Very neat idea. So that way, when it does eventually connect to the body, you now have the option to import the internally stored footage onto the SD card or simply set it to prioritize recording to the SD card. In that case, when you separate the units, the camera will switch back to internal storage, but return to SD storage when connected to the screen module. This is really friendly to all sorts of workflows. I will just say this one thing though, that SD card import time isn't like blazing fast. It's not terribly slow either, but I wouldn't keep anyone waiting like on shoot or on set or anything 
for that to import to the card. But in general, this is just so nice to have just to give you that like buffer room of like not even thinking about shooting. It's just like promotes this shoot first, think later sort of mentality, which I'm all about. Okay, last thing I wanna go over with this front screen unit, and it's kind of similar to the media thing, but the front screen module has the only physical input on this whole system, this USB-C on the side. This is used for all connection purposes, like file transfers and direct webcam usage, but this is also how you charge both units of the Action 2 system. So what's pretty neat is that on and off the charger, the front screen module acts as a power bank for the camera unit, and the only battery indicator you get while they're attached is for the screen module. This again is like so well thought out because obviously the camera unit is the main priority. So if the front screen module dies, you'll at least be able to record for a little bit using the camera unit's internal battery and storage. So like in a pinch, if you absolutely couldn't miss a shot, you could just take this thing right off the screen module, record independently while this thing gets a quick charge, and then you figure it all out later. Later. Awesome. And this dynamic between the camera module and the front screen module is definitely how DJI was able to pull off the durability slash weatherproofing angle on the DJI Action 2. Since the camera unit has no exposed inputs or anything, it actually is really well sealed. And DJI claims that this is drop proof, dust proof, and waterproof up to 10 meters. And although I'm not necessarily going to test those things, that's a definite plus. Because when I got this thing out of the box the first time, I said, that's really neat and minimal and small, but I'm not sure how like life proof this thing is gonna be like a GoPro. But that was definitely like an aha moment to me. I realized they were able to achieve all that stuff, but it's only when it's separated from the front screen module. All right, let's quickly talk about some of these accessories because again, DJI is hitting us with some really well thought out stuff here, like the magnetic lanyard. This is an adjustable length rope lanyard with this flat magnetic surface on the end. This can be worn under your clothes, and then this piece is sort of like this little magnetic shelf here that snaps onto the lanyard from the outside of your clothes. Once that's on there, you can securely fit both units or just the camera unit on there, and now you have a very non-intrusive camera angle fixed right at like torso level. And this is absolutely perfect for like lifestyle vlogging or instructional stuff, any type of video that you want this sort of like POV type angle, but you have both of your hands free. And this is super, super nice, but I will say one thing, if you're wearing a hoodie with little dangly strings right here, you might just want to tie that up or just tuck them in or something because I totally ruined a couple of shots because these strings are like dangling in front of the camera. Now keep in mind, this is a really secure magnet, but I wouldn't be engaging in any type of like action stuff like this because I feel like with a relatively hard like bump like that, it could come off the magnet. So lifestyle stuff, regular walking around type stuff, absolutely perfect for the lanyard. Okay, the next thing I can't stop using with this system, let me just take this lanyard off first. This is a fixed resistance ball joint mount. And I say fixed resistance, meaning it isn't actually lockable, but it just has a solid amount of resistance in the joint. So you really have to make a purposeful move to change the camera's position. You can remove the bottom part here entirely to reveal a quarter 20 thread, which is great for mounting. But let's talk about that bottom part here because there's really something cool going on. So as is, you could just use this as like a little tabletop tripod with minimal anglage or it'll fall over, or you could remove this cap here, revealing this micro rubber surface. This is a super sticky rubber pad that lets you mount this ball joint on most flat surfaces and you just peel it off. It doesn't leave any residue and you just clean the rubber afterwards with water when it gets dirty and then it's totally usable again. This is an amazing system once you get over trusting that little rubber pad to hold everything up, but it really, really does. I use this on all sorts of surfaces with absolutely no problem. And honestly, I was a little bit shocked to find out that washing the pad with water actually works. This allows you to get so many possible angles. Like if there's a flat surface nearby, this thing is probably compatible with it. You're just gonna stick it right on there, angle the camera, and you've got like literally any camera angle. Amazing. All right, moving on to the last accessory in our kit here, but this is the GoPro accessory adapter. 
So kind of self-explanatory, but the top part here is basically the hooks and magnetic surface for that mounting system. But on the other side is your typical GoPro mount for use with, I would say, just about anything in the GoPro ecosystem that uses this mount. I use this to get the DJI Action 2 on my bike using a GoPro handlebar mount, but I did have one issue with it. It was honestly probably my fault, but when both modules are attached and on the GoPro adapter, it makes it a little top heavy, which wouldn't be a problem if these locking hooks didn't allow it to move so much because in a high vibration scenario, this moves around quite a bit and it ended up giving me shots that looked like this. So what I really should have done is attach just the body alone, which would have probably vibrated a lot less, and the movement it did have would have probably been managed by the stabilization. However, I went out there to shoot for like an hour and a half or so, and it was pretty cold. So I am not confident that the camera unit itself would have had the battery power or the storage space to do that whole shoot alone. So I definitely did need it to be attached to the front screen module, but that was giving me really, really shaky footage when on that handlebar mount from the GoPro. So that's just something to think about. All right, there are two other accessories for the Action 2 that I wanna mention, but I don't have with me right now. One is the underwater housing rig DJI offers for the Action 2, which provides underwater protection up to 200 feet and allows both modules to be housed, not just the camera module. We also offer this magnetic macro lens attachment that's going to set the focus of the lens much closer for close subjects, but I haven't tried this on the camera unit yet, so I can't really comment on what that looks like. All right, so speaking of the image, I was really hoping to be delightfully surprised by the video from the DJI Action 2, although I kind of found that it's not really that different than any of the recent GoPros like the 9 or the 10. In anything other than like the direct sunlight or a very well-lit scenario, the video from the Action 2 seems to lose a little bit of its 4K sharpness, and in some cases by a little bit, I mean a lot. And also there's like always that subtle little bit of noise in the not totally black shadow areas. And I've noticed that both of these problems definitely get worse if you add some motion into the equation, either camera motion or significant subject motion within the frame. However, I will say though, of course, that some shots I got with the DJI Action 2 came out really nice. It did certainly prove to me that it's capable of getting a nice sharp shot with a decent amount of dynamic range. And I was pretty delighted to find out that the 4K 120 from this camera does not really suffer any quality loss at all. It's really on par with the rest of my footage. I was a little bit worried about this because the 4K 120 is one of those efficiency recording modes on the DJI Action 2. So basically it stores the higher bitrate recording modes in an HEVC container, like the 4K in 4x3 aspect ratio, the 4K at 100 and 120 frames per second, and the HD at 240 frames per second. So both H.264 and HEVC are different video containers that compress video signal to some degree, but it's just that H.264 is so much more well optimized for like all sorts of editing programs and computers, where HEVC has been known to wreak havoc on computers. And honestly, it was okay editing that first batch of 4K 120, but I'll see when I like really do a deep dive, but I think that's how they're able to get the DJI Action 2 to record in those high bit rate scenarios, like 4K 120 and 4K in the full sensor size of four by three. Okay, just a few more things I wanna get across. You remember those four microphones in each direction once the camera is attached to the front screen module? Well, the Action 2 has a really intelligent onboard audio mixer that merges all of those mics into a very crisp and dynamic audio signal, and I was really impressed with the audio performance. All right, so this is my first go with uh, doing the whole car thing with the DJI Action 2. So I got it mounted using the magic rubber, micro rubber, <laughs> it's like magic to me. Also, use with the DJI Mimo app and the Action 2 is really seamless. 
So the camera is gonna generate its own Wi-Fi signal that that device that's using the app connects to. And if you're using that to monitor for the DJI Action 2, its latency is really, really low, and that works as an excellent monitor. This app is also how you'll be able to do things like digitally zoom the video on the Action 2, and you can also use it as a jumping off point for live streaming via RTMPS protocol, and I'm pretty sure there's support for direct live streaming to Facebook and Twitch. Yeah, and then look at you can just micro rubber it off. Cool. Out again. Sicko. All right, so that's just about everything I wanted to get across with the DJI Action 2. And so now I'm gonna share some of my final thoughts. So first one, obviously, as you can tell, I love how modular this camera system is. But mainly what's really impressing me is the dynamic between this camera unit and the front screen unit. I think DJI really considered what people want with usage in an action cam. 
and they also designed this so it's friendly for all sorts of workflows. It's really, really well suited for like lifestyle vlogging, instructional stuff, like I said, or really just any sort of video work where you just wanna be able to stick a camera in like practically any angle and just hit record without even thinking about it. Especially with accessories like this micro rubber ball joint and this lanyard. Again, two really well thought out accessories that are not only practical, but super fun to use. So big points for lifestyle and vlogging work for the action too, but I'm still not really convinced about the action side of things. If you're using that GoPro accessory mount to get it hooked up onto a pre-existing GoPro whatever in that ecosystem, if both camera modules are attached, it's going to shake around pretty vigorously on that hook and that might ruin one of your shots. And build wise, I'm still not totally confident about getting the action to in like a possibly damaging scenario like I would have no problem with with my GoPro. And this actually reminds me that GoPro did a really smart thing with the 9 where this lens cover is actually removable. It's, it's removable, all right. So if anything happens to the camera and the lens cover gets cracked, it's just that, the cover, and it's totally replaceable. But if the screen gets cracked on the DJI Action 2, that's it. This whole thing is done and you have to completely replace it. So what I think would be really smart for them to do is to make a clear magnetic filter that can just go right over the lens, just like that macro attachment that they have. This way, if something nicks the lens, you're only replacing that lens cover and not the entire camera module. As for the image, like I said earlier, I wasn't expecting to be blown away by the video from the DJI Action 2, but I was at least possibly expecting it to be a little bit better than the video from the GoPro but they're really quite comparable. If this had great or even plain old good low light capabilities, it would be that much stronger of a competitor to the GoPro 9. With the exception of the action capabilities though, I'd say the GoPro still wins there. So with that, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this review on the DJI Action 2 dual screen action camera system. So, as always, if you have any questions about the front screen unit or the camera unit itself or any of these accessories, drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you happen to like this video, hit it with the thumbs up button down below to let me know you liked it. And also, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And that way, you'll be in the loop whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.